Shalom, little, little flock of Yehovah. I pray that you are finding life and peace in this day that Yehovah has made. And I wanna encourage you today. This is another encouragement for the remnant. Um, however, this is a storm update. Um, there's a lot going on in the earth right now. And if you're aware and awake, uh, you probably already know that. Um, but I just want to encourage you today to have some specific focus concerning some things that are currently increasing in the earth right now and are going to continue to build as we turn the Gregorian calendar into 2019. Um, so we're all going to find out what we've built our house on in this coming season. Um, the scripture says the wise man builds his house upon the rock. And uh, Daniel was, we were having a conversation with him the other day, one of the elders in our assembly, those of you that know him. And he just said, you know, in that parable about when the storms of life comes, you find out if you built a wise house or a foolish house. And he had a really just important point. It's like, it doesn't mean that the storm of life doesn't come against the wise man or the foolish man, the storms of life come against both. And I can't think of a better way to start this um, little short encouragement to you guys today than with that admonition. Um, and it's not too late. Uh, what have you built your life upon? What are you trusting in? You know, in the past few days, it's just been amazing to me over the past week how um, many people have just come and said, you know, I was depending on this to be here in my life, but it, it's going away. You know, I was depending on this to be here, but it, it's going away. These people, they're not in my life anymore. This retirement fund, you know, it's not, or this inheritance, it's not here. And it, it may be going away. And I'm telling you, the remnant of Yehovah is in a training um, period right now for what's coming because of our Father's mercy. And um, I'd wanna encourage you not to waste this time that we still have to prepare our hearts for the storm uh, that is coming upon the wise and the foolish on this earth. And we're all gonna find out what we've built our life upon. In fact, I would encourage you as we turn this Gregorian calendar, the new year for us is Yom Teruah on the Creator's calendar on our Father's calendar, uh, most know it as the Feast of Trumpets, the festival, uh, the day of soundings. That is when Yehovah turns the page. Um, but, you know, we live in this world and we have to interact with it. And there is definitely a season of, of change that, that occurs during this time as well. Um, and we're coming into a season of more pressure, uh, of more trying of our faith. And we are all going to find out what we've built our life upon. So, you know, take some time as you have maybe a day off coming up in this season or whenever you listen to this teaching, um, take some time with God and say, what am I trusting in? You know, what have I built my life upon? And I want to encourage you with this scripture as I just hear people reporting about what's happening and trying to separate it a little bit from what God is doing in the earth. And I think that is so dangerous because what is happening in the earth may be coming, um, if it's a, a geophysical thing, it, may, it is coming from a physical um, source that's causing it. But ultimately our father sets as sovereign or king over the universe. And there is nothing that comes into our lives as his people, especially more so as the entire earth that he is not setting sovereign upon. And it's so important that we frame this period of time scripturally and use scripture, prophecy, and what God has prepared for his people for this season to be able to um, correctly identify and then define and then find our purpose and what we should be doing in this season is so important to find that in the scripture right now. So I want to read to you from Romans chapter 2, just a few passages here. Um, as you watch this, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening for you guys, but starting in verse 4 of Romans chapter 2, um, the scriptures say this, it says, Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, speaking of God's kindness toward us, and tolerance and patience, 
not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. We have been in a season of kindness and tolerance and patience. There has been bloody massacres. There has been satanic ritual abuse. There has been um, sex slave trafficking. There's abortion of babies. There, on and on and on and on you could go. of The evils in the world that are and are increasing. And some people mistake the slowness of God to judge that as that God is not seeing and God is not hearing. But the scripture is thoroughly clear that you reap what you sow and that when Jehovah comes this time, he is coming as judge of all the earth as we will see in this passage. And I would encourage you, uh, whether you are a believer in Yeshua, Jesus, which we call his uh, Hebraic name, Yehoshua, Yeshua, which means our deliverance, <laughs> and we are needing that um, even more so in the days coming, but you know, God has given us a season to repent. And that repentance means to return back to the everlasting covenant of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I may do some teachings on the everlasting covenant of God because that's where God started with me. And um, I may just start teaching on the everlasting covenant. It's amazing in our scripture when you put these things together, but I need to keep this short and stay on focus here. So do not despise the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God, or Elohim in Hebrew, leads you to what? Repentance. Have you been repenting? Have you been returning back to the eternal ways of God? The remnant of God has. And I want to encourage you to examine what you are building your life up on right now because it's about to be exposed to you and to everyone on this earth. We're going to know what we've been trusting in because you're about to run to what you've been trusting in. Can you hear that? The Bible says that the righteous run into the name of Jehovah and they are safe there. And I'm telling you, if you're trusting in your inheritance, if you're trusting in your five. 401k, if you're trusting in riches, if you're trusting in even your prep stash that you've put up, when this pressure increases and God reminds you of this little video that you listen to this day, what are you going to run to? I'm telling you what you're going to run to. You're going to run to what you're trusting in. And I would encourage you to, while you still have some peace in America and around the world, where, whatever the condition of your nation is right now, to run to Yehovah, to run to the eternal covenant, to get the scriptures out and say, Father, show me what is happening. You pre-told us in the scripture, you prophesied what was coming. So when it came, we wouldn't freak out. So do that, but don't despise this time. It's the time to repent. And repent does not mismean the topical Greek understanding of changing your mind. It means to return and adhere to the eternal covenant of God. It means to do a 180 and go back to the eternal covenant. And anywhere we've strayed from the scripture, from the simple belief of God's word, we need to return back to that. Keep going, verse five, but according to your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath. Now that's a big key word for a lot of people right now in our society, especially in what we would call um, industrial Christianity. You know, oh no, God's not a God of wrath. Well, go through your renewed covenant, or you may call it the New Testament, and look at the scriptures on wrath. They have not gone away. They're still there. And the Bible is explicit through the prophets that what we are about to and continue to go into is called the day of Yehovah, the day of wrath. Who can stand the day of his coming? It is a day of burning. Uh, and you, we have got to hide ourselves in him for that time. But according to the hardness of your an unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So that's so important to equate those two things together. It is the day of wrath and it is the day of revelation. It says, again, reading, um, the, the day of wrath and revelation. The book of Revelation is the book of the revelation of Yehoshua, of Yeshua, our deliverer, returning. 
And when he returns, when that sixth seal pops and the wrath of the lamb is seen and the kings run to their deep underground bunkers that they have built all around the earth and then they uh, are brought together by Yehovah and assembled as nations against the lamb to fight against him as you read at the end of Revelation chapter 19. And you have the final judgment of the beast. You have the final judgment of the false prophet. You have Satan, the ancient dragon thrown into the pit for 1,000 years to fall endlessly. And, and you have the culmination of this age that is coming. But it is the day of wrath and the day of revelation. And brother and sister, I want to urge you today that you cannot enter into the day of the revelation without the day of wrath. Yes, Thessalonians, we are not reserved for the day of wrath. We are not going to enter into it, but just like the Israelites were kept in Egypt, in Goshen, there was a certain amount of it they experienced, but then there was a separation and a protection, a fire by day, a cloud by night, which I know came on then on the wilderness, but there was still that protected protection on them when God judged when Jehovah judged the enemies of his people it brought destruction to the principalities and powers and their false worship systems in the earth but it brought deliverance to his people can you hear that the judgment of your enemy that you will see with your eyes will bring your deliverance if you are the remnant of Yehovah. If you have built your life upon the rock, upon Yehoshua, our Messiah, and you have hidden yourself in his everlasting covenant, and you've repented and are repenting and are humbling yourself, not lifting up your head in pride like the sons of the tares are doing right now, where we're proud to be this and proud to be that, and we don't care what the word of God says, we're just proud about it. Well, you're identifying yourself as a son of a tare. But the son of the wheat right now are humbling themselves or bowing themselves saying, God, not my ways of worship, not my ways and what I want to do, but I'm returning to your ways. How do you want me to worship? When do you want me to celebrate? What are your holy days? When, when is the Sabbath for you? How? And go back to the scripture because it is safety. There's so much in the prophets. Maybe we can do some more little short vids on that. Verse 6. Okay, so he is coming as the righteous judgment of God. That's how he's come as judge. Who shall render to each one according to his work. And that's a quote from Psalms chapter 62 verse 12. He is going to render to each one. Are you in each one? I'm in each one. I'm talking each one. Nobody's going to escape this. Everlasting life. Here's an everlasting. Do you have everlasting life? You do if you're in the everlasting covenant. But if you're in a little bitty little new covenant and you've cut off the everlasting covenant because you don't need that old stuff back there, this is all new. And you've swallowed the Jesuit lie that this is just new and we have all these new things to do. The old is bad. The bad is out. It's in with the new. No, it's not new. It's renewed. The last Passover Yeshua had on the earth, he renewed the covenant that Jeremiah talked about, that Ezekiel talked about. He was renewing the covenant where he divorced and broken off with Israel because of their apostasy, because of their refusal to worship him. He divorced Israel. Read the prophets. And after he divorced them, he, but he said, I'm not going to forsake you forever. I'm not going to be angry against you forever. And that's what Yeshua did. He came and renewed the covenant quoted in the book of Hebrews. But who did he renew it with? He renewed it with Israel and Jacob. Yes, the everlasting covenant. I may read a verse about that before I finish today. Verse 7, that's why we have everlasting life. Everlasting